So I decided today that we were going to do our Viver water well pump test. Now this unit here is a half horsepower 230 volt submersible well pump. It is a 4 inch pump and I purchased it from Lowe's.com and it cost me about $124 shipped to my door. Now I want to go over a couple things before we address the pump about the packaging. I have to say their packaging was A plus tip top top notch. The pump is actually shipped inside of a bag inside of this tube with uh, styrofoam and, and plastic caps. So it's really, really top notch shipping packaging. You don't have to worry about this thing, be, you know, coming damaged in, inside the box. Um, it also comes with what looks like probably 25 foot of cable. And what I noticed on this well pump, this is 18 gauge wire. It also comes with a small roll of rubber tape and a small roll of electrical tape for your wire splices. Up here we have a built-in check valve inside. I have had a few people on a couple videos say that the check valve was a little wonky. Sometimes they'd seal, sometimes they wouldn't. So if you were to use this pump, be sure to put an additional check valve on top of it. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop it inside of our test tank and we're going to see what kind of pressure and what kind of flow rate this thing will produce and while we do that we're going to go ahead and put our amp meter on it and we're going to check the amp draw throughout the process of testing the pump. Now before we get to the actual pump test and sticking it in the test tank I want to kind of give an explanation here. I've had a few people on a few videos buy this pump and they both said the same issue was that the pump would not build up enough pressure to satisfy the pressure switch. Now the average system you have a well pump that's down in the well and then you have a bladder tank like that and it takes 50 or 60 psi in order to satisfy the pressure switch. Well if you come here and you look at these directions the water pump goes down in the ground under the water and then it comes up goes out of the well and they're showing that it does not go into a bladder tank they're showing that it goes into a storage tank with a float valve on it so essentially they're pumping it into you know more or less a a cistern type situation or like a homemade water tower or something like that so basically it's not being pumped into a pressurized vessel like a typical bladder tank would be it's pumping it into a cistern like a 750 gallon or 1000 gallon storage vessel so i believe that's probably what this pump is meant for it's meant to go uh, be used for cistern style hookups that's why the pump comes with you know 25 or 30 foot of cable where you could actually put this pump itself in the cistern or you know in the well and allow it to dump into the cistern but it's only a half horsepower pump so I'm not expecting its depth capability being that deep where most of my typical half horsepower is kind of max out at 140 or 120 feet so we're gonna go ahead now we're gonna wire it up and we're gonna see what this thing flows Follow the directions. The directions say always hook up the ground, so we're going to run it through our box here and make sure we hook up our ground. And this will give us a point of reference to test amp draw. Okay, now this right here is the cable that comes with the pump, so we're going to leave that as part of the line. And we're going to clip an amp meter right on here. Now I just received this in the mail today. I ordered it off Amazon. I actually ordered a couple of them. But this is going to be my amp meter. And this is the most important device when checking a well pump. If you want to make sure it's good or bad. If you know what type of uh, well pump you have in your well. You can just revert to the chart for that pump. And it will tell you what the typical running amp draw is and if the amp draw is say you know more than what the maximum reading is you'll know that your pump's starting to fail so all you do 
is you take one hot wire we'll use the red for this case and you just simply clamp it around it and then turn the system on and the screen will tell you what the amp draw is all right now we're all wired up I've shortened my discharge pipe so we can actually see the water flow the display meter here on the bottom is going to give us gallons per minute and we can use our valve here to meter the flow and that will give us our pressure which we can determine how deep the pump is actually capable of pumping from so we're going to go ahead we're going to start it wide open we've got a 240 volt supply we're going to go ahead and plug it in all right so right now we are registering 25.2 gallons per minute it's got a pretty decent flow now 25 gallons per minute for a half horsepower pump is quite a significant flow rate typically when you have a pump that flows a high volume of water then it lacks the ability to build high pressure but I do notice it is registering a little bit of pressure even with the system fully open. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna slowly decrease the flow rate and it will allow the pressure to increase. So we're gonna watch both gauges. So I've reduced it from 25 down to 20 and I've got 40 psi so 40 psi is the typical turn on pressure for your pressure switch so at the lowest point of a 4060 pressure switch this pump has already reduced its flow by about 20 percent let's see if we can bump it up to 60 psi that's where it would satisfy a pressure switch now we're at 13 and a half, so we've reduced its flow almost 50%, roughly like 45% we've reduced its flow. So we're going to continue to, to close the discharge, we're going to see how much pressure she can build. Okay, so now we're only getting about 5 gallons per minute, if we look down here. about right about five gallons per minute and we're getting about 70 74 psi Let's see if we can reduce the flow a little bit more we're down to 2.8 gallons per minute over here and it's still at about 75 psi so this pump its max capability is 75 PSI. So we're going to go ahead and open it. Let it go back up. Zoom out for you. I'm going to go back. And it goes back to 25 gallons per minute. Actually, it's a pretty significant flow rate. Now, before we talk about the depth, let's go over here and let's check our amp draw. So that is our amp draw. We are pulling four and a half amps. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to 40. We've reduced our flow to 19 and a half. We're at only 40 PSI. And we've increased our amp draw slightly. It's at 4.64 now. We go ahead and increase it up to 60. Our flow rate has decreased to 13 gallons per minute at 60 PSI. 
and it's still holding steady at 4.6 amps which is perfectly fine for a half horsepower and go back to the maximum pressure again we're roughly at 74 75 psi it's only giving me five gallons per minute of flow the pumps under more strain and the amp draw is actually lessened so what that tells me is the pump is theoretically cavitating it's trying to give it more water than than the discharge will allow so it actually likes more flow but there's a problem with that I'll explain that to you here in a second we're gonna go ahead and open this up and we're gonna turn it off and we're gonna talk about it okay so for full transparency let's pull this out this is the Viver well pump half horsepower now this pump its maximum capability was 74 we'll just call it 75 psi so 75 psi if we look at our chart here it takes 21 psi just to lift water from 50 foot deep now you have a pressure switch your pressure switch is a 40 60 pressure switch or a 30 50 pressure switch so let's use a 30 50 for example here so a 30 50 switch means it needs to build up to 50 psi in order for it to kick off that pressure switch but your well pump or your water level in your well is at 50 foot uh, uh, an average static level is 50 foot in a well so let's say you put the well pump in the well at 80 foot and you have a 50 foot static level you have 30 foot of water that your pump is sitting in now it has to be able to overcome 21.7 psi just to lift water 50 feet now we know from our test that this pumps only capable of pumping 74 psi so if we add 21 to our 50 which is our 50 psi on our pressure switch we get 71 psi so that means this pump cannot lift water past basically 60 foot deep in the well and satisfy the pressure switch the pressure switch has to be able to cut itself off in order for the pump not to burn itself up so this pump can be put in a well it just cannot be put deep in a well it can go maybe maximum 60 foot if you have a really shallow well um, I have seen these uh, pumps be used in 24 inch board wells because board wells typically are a maximum depth of about 50 foot and you can put that pump in a board well and it would shut off a pressure switch now another thing you could do if you have this pump or if you purchased it and you're having some troubles you could go to the store and you could buy you a 20 40 pressure switch that means your switch would cut the pump off at 40 psi that gives you another 35 psi to work with so that's right in the middle of here so you could set the pump at 75 foot and you could run a 20 40 pressure switch and theoretically the pump should be able to cut itself off but if you remember any of my other flow tests we were getting pressures above 100 120 some of the other pumps are building towards 175 now the next test that I'm gonna do after this half horsepower Viver well pump is going to be my half horsepower well pump it is a 10 gallon per minute Franklin electric motor and that is what we put in most of our wells when a pump only goes into a hundred feet in the well now this pump I couldn't put it in the well at a hundred feet because based off of the pressure that it showed me it wouldn't be able to physically cut off the pressure switch if I were to put it in there at a hundred feet now how do I know that because I run a 40 60 pressure switch and we already know at a hundred feet it takes 43 psi to overcome a 100 foot head depth 
So if I put the pump at 100 foot, and if I were to ever draw the water level down to say 90 or 95 foot, then we're going to have to overcome 40 PSI plus the 60. So that means we would have to theoretically be able to produce 103 PSI at this gauge in order to shut off the pressure switch or the pump is going to risk burning up. So why do they sell this pump and they label it as a deep well pump? I do not know. Theoretically, I don't believe it is a deep well pump. When, when you factor in its ability to only build 74 PSI, it's not truly designed for a deep well. It's designed more for a shallow well. But if you were to go online and search shallow well pump, what you're going to find is a jet pump. You're going to find a single line jet pump that sucks from 27 foot maximum suction depth. And that's what those are called. Those are called shallow well pumps. But this theoretically is not to be used in a deep well situation. And the only reason I bought this is because I've had multiple viewers on other videos say, oh, I bought uh, you know, a pump from Lowe's. And my first comment to them was, was it the $120 beaver pump? And they go, yes, it was. And I told them what they had to do. They had to, you know, either swap the pump out for one that has the ability to build higher pressure or try to go buy a 2040 pressure switch to see if they could get by. Now, everybody can't afford, uh, you know, a $500, $600, $800 well pump. So I understand that's why they bought this. This is very cost effective at $120 and it does move water. It does lift water. And if you look at the instruction manual, the instruction manual actually shows that it's not going into a bladder tank. It's showing that it's going into a cistern, an open dump, basically, you know, sucking it out of, uh, of, of a well and dumping it into something very similar to this tank here. Um, you know, you could make you a homemade water tower out of something similar to this. But that's basically you know, why I wanted to do this to show everybody, you know, don't buy the pump and think I'm going to put it in my well at 150 foot and expect to get 25 gallons a minute out of it. You're not. If you were to take this pump and put it inside of a cistern or put it inside of, say, a 500 gallon tote and you needed pressurized water, that's where you could do that. You could take it and build a very similar system to this you would have a well over here that doesn't produce a lot of water that has a deep well pump in it and it fills up your large storage reservoir 500 thousand gallon storage reservoir then you could buy you this four inch half horsepower beaver well pump and you could put it in your cistern and then then you would wouldn't have a problem because we know right here it only has two feet of head pressure it has the ability to pump up you know, 75 PSI, so it wouldn't have an issue with turning off a pressure switch. So if it was in a cistern, it would work fine. The only thing you have to do is understand that well pumps are designed to, to be used in a vertical situation. You could not lay this pump over on its side and expect it to work and last. It would destroy the impellers of the pump. The way they're designed and their bearings and everything, it's designed to be run vertically. So it has to be in a, in a situation like this. So I wanted to pause the video real quick and kind of reiterate something. Now if you go on the Lowe's website or you go on the Beaver website and you look up this pump, it is labeled as a 25 gallon a minute well pump and it states that it has a maximum head of 164 feet. Now, if you do the math, 164 feet, it takes 70.2 PSI to lift water from 164 feet. Now, this well pump did 74 PSI, so it is not false advertising. It flows exactly 25 gallons per minute open-ended, and it theoretically can pump from 164 feet. The issue is it cannot satisfy a pressure switch if it is put at 164 feet. Just like the directions show, it is designed to be put in a well and to be pumped into an open-ended reservoir, like a storage tank or a cistern. 
I'm not reviewing this pump to bash it. I'm reviewing this pump for the sake of the customer and the consumer who is interested in buying this pump or at hopes to where they can understand a little bit about it. This pump is not designed to be put in a well deeper than theoretically 50 or 60 foot and have a regular service life. I would like to make mention of the quality of the pump. Now, after taking it out of the box, the packaging and the boxing was impeccable. have to give that a, uh, an A plus for the packaging. Um, the pump was not going to be uh, destroyed or harmed in any way during shipping. Um, the stainless steel construction of this pump was beautiful. There was no imperfections anywhere in any of the stainless steel um, design of the pump. Top to bottom, it was full stainless steel. I cannot speak to the internals of the pump, but I do know that inside the pump, um, it does have a plastic check valve. And I have had viewers, subscribers in the past who purchased this pump who did say that the check valve was a little sticky and that if you were to use it, uh, it was smart to go ahead and use a additional check valve. So that would be something that I would uh, I would like to uh, you know put on the record. Um, but other than that, this pump performed exactly as advertised. It pulled right around four and a half amps. It flowed 25 gallons per minute, and it built a maximum of 74 psi. So that tells me right there it it can do what it's labeled 164 feet of head max it's capable of pumping that. It just cannot build additional pressure on top of that. But that's gonna be it for this video. Um, it wasn't as in depth as my other flow uh, tests with my other pump, but I kinda already knew what I was gonna get into with a pump like this. I just wanted to review it, and I paid for this pump out of my own pocket so I could give an honest review. I don't give it uh, I don't give it a one star. It it has its place, and not everyone can afford an eight hundred or eleven hundred dollar well pump. So if you have a cistern and you need a pump inside your cistern, then this might be the one for you. If if you've got you know something that need you know like uh maybe put it under your dock in your pond for irrigation. It's it's worth that. A hundred and twenty bucks. It comes with you know twenty five foot of cable. And you can hook up a, a line to this and actually water your, your sprinklers or, or, you know, you know, however you want to do it. You wouldn't want to put a seven, eight hundred dollar well pump under your, under your dock or in your pond to irrigate with. Why not use a hundred and twenty dollar one? But that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. One more thing. I'm going to be giving this well pump away to someone in need or maybe one of my subscribers so if you are in need of a well pump and this one kind of falls in that category um, feel free to like comment and share if you like and you comment and you share this video that will let me know that you fall under those categories of somebody who may need this pump um, if you don't or if you say you don't need this pump then I'm going to be giving it to someone local to me because occasionally I do run across people who can't afford a water system and they need a well pump. And the last thing that I want to do is leave someone without water when I have the 100% capability of giving someone water. Because electricity may go out. And we can deal with that because that shuts everything down. But when we have everything but we don't have water, that's when, this, that's when the struggle becomes real. So I have done two tests prior to this one they were hallmark pumps and i did give them both away to people who were in need one of them went in a board well and it got a 2040 pressure switch so i kind of knew that this pump was going to be something very similar to that i just wanted to reiterate it and show you um physically with the gauge and an understanding of this pump's capability so thank you all for watching see y'all next time